Hello friends, welcome back to this series of Windows programming and uh, today I am going to discuss about uh, one program using the event kernel object uh, where uh, we will enable the communication between the two threads. There will be a sender thread and there will be a receiver thread. I have already showed you uh, one uh, example related to the sender and receiver threads where sender was sending the message to the receiver and receiver was able to receive the message and process that message. But in that example, I have not uh, done any kind of synchronization so that is why the output was uh, given in a haphazard manner uh, but today I will just show you that how you can use the event kernel object and the critical section both together in such kind of scenarios this is one of the scenarios where you may need to use both the event and the critical section objects okay so uh, this will be the last uh, video on the event kernel object about the critical section object I have already told you if you have not seen that video yet you I would suggest that you should go back to this playlist and you should uh, uh, visit that video and see that how the critical section and event kernel objects uh, can be used I have told you about the uh, manual reset event kernel objects and I have told you about the auto reset kernel objects auto reset event kernel objects and today I am just going to uh, show you one example that how you how you can use both these objects one is critical section and the other one is event kernel object Please remember that this critical section is a user mode synchronization object. I have already told you about this, which means that it can only synchronize the threads within the same application, within the same process, right? If you have to synchronize the threads between the uh, different processes, then in that case, you must use the kernel objects, which are like event, mutexes, semaphores, etc., right? So today I'm just going to show you one example related to both these concepts where you can use both these concepts. So let me just quickly start the coding. So this is the handle for the uh, sender. H sender is equal to null. And I'm going to create one more handle for the H C I E D E R is equal to null. And uh, I'm just going to create one more handle for the event object. So this is H event is equal to null. And there is one more critical section object I need to create. Critical section CS. Sorry, CS. Just that's it. So these four objects I have created. Now I will just create one function for the starting method for the sender thread. So that will be named as sender and the other one should be void recie -E -E receiver okay so both the threads are there and now in the main thread i'm just going to first initialize one event object h event is equal to create event i will create it as a manual reset event create event and i am just giving here the null second argument is the true which means that it is a manual reset event object if i pass false then it means that it's a auto reset event object and initial state would be non available non flagged right which means that this particular event kernel object is not available for any thread to wait on right if, if if any thread will wait it will not be scheduled it, it will continuously wait on this one no thread can be scheduled against this event kernel object if i have passed this to false until someone makes it true okay so the last argument is the name of the event kernel object so this is text and here i want to give the name of the kernel object event kernel object so that is evt1 Okay, so I have already told you about the code where you can write like int err is equal to gate last error and using this function you can find out the values like whether this has been passed or failed uh, but I will not uh, use my time today to write that code. I hope you might have seen that in the previous videos and if you have not seen that once you will see my previous videos you will be able to find that that what I am trying to say. So here I will not waste my time. Uh, explaining that so let me just quickly create the other objects I am assuming here like everything will be created successfully so I am going to create this sender thread is equal to create thread 
and here I will pass null and then it's zero and then it's LP thread start routine and then I will give the name sender. This is the function name sender and then the arguments I'm passing null and then it's uh, creation flag which is zero which means that it will be immediately schedulable and I don't want to uh, manage the thread ID. Should I manage the thread ID? Yes, because I have to send the messages. So I need to manage the thread IDs as well. So I need to use the thread IDs th ID sender and handle th ID R E C V R receiver. That's it. So here I will just um, handle uh, th id sender okay so that's it so similarly i will create the receiver threads so let me just copy paste it and uh, this will be i should not give these things i have already declared them so i should not have given the names uh, should declaration so here i will write like r e CVR H receiver and here I will give the name of the thread starting point of the thread that is a function so that's here and here I will give the name as ID receiver that's it so then sender receiver both have been created and now I need to wait on both these threads until both of these are done I should not close my application so what I will do, I, why this is giving me the error? Handle asterisk is incompatible of type LPD word. Okay, let me just, okay, it's D word. Okay, so now it's fine. So here I will create the wait function, wait array, handle H array, and it's two, and here I will pass H sender, and H receiver. So both I have passed and I will wait on both. Wait for multiple objects. So how many objects are there? Two objects are there. What is the array? The array name is H array and then I have to wait it for um, all which means that I need to wait until all these threads are done and then number of milliseconds I will pass it in finite which means I will wait till the time all the threads are done right so this is done now so now we have to write uh, uh, the code in the sender for sending the message to the receiver so what receiver will do receiver will be inside a while loop so while get message right so this is get message and then here i need to give the name of the message structure variable so i give it a name m so this is get message address of m and then it's null because there is no window handle and there is zero and zero i will explain you later why i am passing these zeros and what is the meaning of these two functions in the later videos but as of now you just uh, keep in mind that you can use just this way right so here what i will do i will simply print the message so let me just give some message ids here has define msg1 is equal uh, is equal to 100 and 101 and then let me just give it has define msg2 is 102 similarly 3 4 and 5 messages i will create so 3 is three it's four it's five so it's five it's four that's it so these are the messages which it will receive so here what it, what it will do it will simply print it what it will do the message received is m dot message 
okay so here what i will do i will simply put a sleep for one second so that we can see the effect of waiting right otherwise it will run in one go right so we just want to see whether if some thread is waiting then the other thread should should not uh, do anything right so here i need to put some synchronization synchronization mechanism so that when the receiver is uh, displaying the message uh, till that time sender should not send any message right okay so there are two requirements now the first requirement is that sender should not be able to send the message it should not be able to send any message till the receiver says that i am okay right so till the receiver says that it's okay uh, then uh, till then it should it should not say that it should not send any message right so for that i will use the event kernel object right and uh, to synchronize the messaging like when the sender will send the message at that time receiver should wait and when receiver has received the message that time receiver should be able to print the message and sender should be able to wait right so here what i am doing here also doing something like this while one and here i will keep sending the messages let me just uh, send the message like this uh, MSG1, MSG2. Okay, let me just put like zero, one, two, three, and four. Right. So these are the message IDs. So why I have given this? Because I I would like to use them as a array index so that it can be easily printed. Right. So for I, I int i is equal to 0, i is smaller than 5, i plus plus. In fact, I don't need to give any such message. I just need to give one message, which is msg exit. That should be, uh, I guess, 4, right? Because 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Four times it will run, and I want that once it is 4 then receiver should say that I am done and it should uh, come out of this. Okay, so let me just uh, do one thing here I will just keep sending the message how, how I will send the message post thread message and uh, what I will do I will simply use the thread ID of this receiver thread. So what is the thread ID of the receiver thread thread ID receiver and then I will send the message I and then I will just pass 0 and uh, let me put it like null and null or you can say it's 0 and 0 because no problems with that and after posting the message it should wait no before posting the message it should wait for one second and then it should before that it should print sending the message and here you go sending the message and uh, it should be like just a message nothing else so it's done so it will wait for one minute, uh, one second, and then it will send the message, and then here it will receive the message, right? But as of now, if I just uh, start these threads, sender and receiver, then you will be able to get haphazard messages, right? Let me just show you that what I am trying to say: the sender and receiver both are running, but uh, they will just uh, sender will uh, run. Uh, while the receiver is uh, printing the message and all those things will happen and you will be able to see some haphazard messages on the screen. Okay, sending the message, the message received and you can see that the message received sent and you can see that the messages have been mingled, right? So nothing is clear like what has been received and what has been sent. Okay, so this, this is what is happening, right? 
So here, first thing is that receiver should stop when the message is 5. Uh, you can say the 4. Message ID is 4. Then it should stop. So sending the message and uh, if the message ID comes to be 4, if m dot message id let me know it's not the correct place it's sender it's receiver is here if m dot message is equal to 4 or you can say msg exit then in that case i will simply print c out e n g l the message to exit has been received so it will simply exit which means that i will simply break it and this thread will also stop i should not have given this for loop because i am already using uh, for loop so i should not have given that for a while loop so i will simply do something like this so that's it so this is for the receiver thread so receiver will just exit when it has got the message message exit right otherwise it will print and it will wait for one second okay so let us now synchronize these so first requirement is that we should synchronize the sender and receiver right so the first requirement is that sender should be able to send any message when receiver is up right so when the receiver is up then in that case it should set event i will use the event so h event right so sender sender will send the message only when receiver is ready and how the receiver will tell that it is ready it will tell through this by setting the event so here what i will do i will simply do like d word dw is equal to wait for single object h event and infinitely okay so infinitely i am waiting on the event so what i will do if dw is not equal to wait failed then what i will do and there are three conditions all three you should check dw is not equal to wait abandoned and dw is not equal to wait timeout right so although when you are using infinite there is no chances but uh, for the timeout but uh, still you should uh, follow this practice Okay, so now if it is fine, then what it will do, it will simply go ahead, right? So what I will do, I will simply put something like this. So if weight is not failing and if uh, weight is not abandoned and uh, if weight is not timed out, then I will start sending the message, right? So once the receiver is ready, then only there will be a signal to sender, which means that sender is uh, waiting on this event object and waiting for someone to signal this event object. I have already told you about this signaling and non-signaling concepts in the previous videos. So once this event kernel object is signaled, then only it will move ahead. And how that will be signaled? That will be signaled by the receiver itself. So when the receiver will be up, it will call the set event function and it will set the event uh, to signal and then it will get the message that yes it has been signaled now what we want we want that when the sender is sending then receiver should not be able to receive right so for that i will use the critical section so what i will do here i will call initialize critical section i have already told you about these functions cs and at the end what i will do i will simply delete the critical section right so here it's like critical section deletion okay so here what i will do 
when I am sending the message, then in that condition, what I will do? Enter critical section. It's address of CS. And once I have posted the message, I will simply call leave critical section. Address of CS. Right? And same thing I will do here. When I am reading the message, when I have received the message, then I will enter into the critical section. And once I have received the message, after waiting for one second, I will leave the critical section. Okay, so this is the way uh, we will try to synchronize it. So what will happen like if receiver is doing something, then sender will not be able to send the message. And when sender is sending the message, right, if it is doing this thing, if the sender is doing this thing, then receiver will not be able to do any of these things, means printing the message or uh, finding out any message. Right? So why is this? Failing to release log CS in, okay, so before the break I need to call leave critical section here right because we are just breaking it so we need to leave the critical section okay so let me just uh, build it okay so this has been succeeded so now let's see what happens and uh, once it will be done, then we are done for today. So these are sending sending the messages. So once the message will be received, you can see that once you are sending the message, then the receiver is not interfering with this message. You cannot see that uh, in front of this any other message is coming. No, it's all like after 0, 1, 2, 3, all the messages have been printed. Right, the message received 0, the message received 2, 3 and ultimately when it got the message 4, then it has simply uh, sent the message, simply exited from this loop, right. So these are the ways you can synchronize the threads. If you are expecting that they, they will do in a alternate manner that sender will send and then receiver will receive, then in that case you need to uh, put one more uh, event kernel object you can do that one as well like here it was happening like once the uh, sender was sending the receiver was not able to get any time for uh, two messages like you can see that two messages continuously are there for sending and then one message for receiver is coming then continuously three messages are there for sending but after that there are three messages continuously for receiving the message right but it, it, is, it was to ensure that if sender is doing something, then receiver will not be able to do anything. And when the receiver is doing something, then sender will not interfere with the receiver's time slice. In fact, time slice, uh, with, with the time slice, nothing is happening. It's all about uh, when I am doing something, the other should not be, the other one should not be able to do anything. Right. So this is the way you can synchronize your threads. And uh, I hope you, uh, you might have understood this. this these, are the, uh, these are some of the tough concepts in the uh, Windows programming, but if you understand them and if you make a hold on them, then uh, you will be your life will be a much sim your, your life will become easier when you will do the programming related to the kernel objects and critical sections and all that, right? So there is one exercise for you. I want that once receiver has sent the message, sender uh, once the sender has sent the message, receiver should not be able to receive. Uh, so receiver should not be able to. Receiver should be able to re uh, receive the message, but at the same time, sender should not get the time to uh, send the message again. I mean, you should not be able to see these kind of situations. Like here you can see that two send messages, three send messages are continuously there, four send messages are there, and then the receiver starts, right? I want that one sender, one sender has sent the message for the first time, then receiver should receive the message. And then the second sender should come and then the second receiver should come. So alternately that should come. So how you will achieve that? Can you please try that and let me know in the comment section if you are able to do that. If no, then I will create one more video as an exercise. Uh, otherwise from the next uh, video, I will start about the mutex critical section of mutex uh, kernel object, right? 
so have a nice day guys bye bye and let me know if you have understood this i will just copy and paste this code in one of the comments uh, for the same video thank you have a nice day bye bye and please like subscribe my channel and share my videos